flight controller is Huey Green, and the skies the limit.
you can tell all your friends at home, you say that I've seen Hughie being run after by women on the telly. Well, it's lovely to have you here today. What's your name? Mrs. Lovell. Mrs. Lovell, the first name? Lila. Lila, I'm... Lila. Lila. I've got my cheeks at end today, that's right. <laughs> Lila Lovell. Now, my love, what have you decided you'd like to answer questions on? Oh, well, uh, I want them to say cooking, but I'm only good on plain cooking. Plain cooking? But I said television. Don't tell it it's, it's my life at the moment. It's it? I've been in hospital a lot. It's it. Nobody asked you to come out. Oh, no. <laughs> I just can't go out. You can't go out. I see. You're feeling better now, are you? Oh, yes. Are you? I see. Getting cheeky again. You're getting cheeky again? Yes. Well, I made you run around. That's a good sign. Well, it's a very good sign. Yeah. We'll have the questions now. Two journeys I've made. Hello, hello. Right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Cup Charlie. Yes, can you? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> well, just follow this, because the Dickens have a question to help you on. Yeah. Uh, just a minute. Is it? What? Is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> the centenary of the death of which novelist has been... <laughs> The centenary of the death of which novelist has been extensively celebrated on television this year. <laughs> novelist? Yes, a very famous novelist. Yorkshire? No, not Yorkshire. I've told you this was a... I'll go back to this inside. Oh, no, I'm not. Don't bother about it. Oh, Lila, you know I can't help you, and I told you this was the dickens of a question. And now you've got me on in a bit. Try. Try it again. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> See, no, 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 no
Yeah. He's good. Yeah. You're going to make a piece of willis. So you will. Yeah. Yeah. Now turn around like the cook. Roy will get a good bag of cook. Now, now, now. Take a romantically in your arms. Oh, yeah. See, that's yeah. the okay. That's that's the the now, the line is the line is. Do what he's saying. Take the yeah. line down. You're supposed to say to her, we are under the stars, my darling. Say something soft, and you say it loud. Now, off you go, right? We are under the stars, my darling. Say something soft. Right, I will be Looking and all that sort of thing. Anyway, here we are, and here's the first question. Is it on astronomy? This is worth a pound. Was the great bear named after a striptease dancer? Michael. Uh, Michael, yes, that's a, that's, a, that's a better answer to the question, and you get a pound. You get a pound. <laughs> now, for three pounds, there are two types of telescopes used by amateurs. One is a reflector, one is the other one. A what? Refractor. A refractor is the correct answer. <laughs> Six pounds worth of travel coming up next, which is on the way to the Lake District. What has recently been discovered by Russian and American probes about the temperature of Venus? Um, it's very high, but 240 degrees according to the Russian. Yeah, yeah. 440 according to the American. I see. Is that that is correct? So you would, is that hotter than they thought it was? Um, yes, it is. That is that's the answer we were trying to get. That's the answer you have given, and you have six pounds. Ten pounds is coming up right now, which will take you to the Lake District and back from Wales. I'm certain there are two recent rival theories about the origin of the universe. One is known as the steady state or continuous creation theory. What is the popular name for the other? Uh, Big Bang. Big, Big what? Bang. The Big Bang. <laughs> Big Bang. <laughs> oh, I've got news for you. You're all laughing, and he's perfectly right. It is the Big Bang. <laughs> yeah, I hope we don't have any more Big Bangs anyway. Right, now, ten pounds, I mustn't help you after this. You do understand that's the regulation. The stars, and this is 15 pounds of the travel, in the constellation Cassiopeia, form the outline of a letter. What letter? A little bit louder. W. W is the correct answer when it should be drawn. Down there near to here. All right, 30 pounds coming next, which is a lot of travel. In which constellation are Rigel, Betelgeuse, and Bellatrix? Orion. Orion is correct for 30 pounds. Now, the 30 pounds is yours. You could go to Scotland for 30 pounds. What are you going to do? You going to take the 30 or try for 60? Think of Australia. What? You try. You think you should try? <laughs> How many bright stars in Ursa Major make up the plow? Um, seven. seven is the correct answer. <laughs> Now, the next is for 100 pounds, which, of course, is the spending money for a 1,000 miles. Or, instead of 100 pounds, you can take a trip right the way around the British Isles, staying in first-class hotels and everything. Now, what are you going to do? Keep the 60, or would you like to try for 100? You've done very well so far. I think I'll try. You I'll think try. you'll try? All right. All right. Bruce, we've got our fingers crossed for you here. Gas and I saw, I think that's the correct, uh, the correct yeah. pronunciation. Gas and I, is that right? And Gassendi, pardon me, sir. Gassendi saw a transit of Mercury across the star disk in 1631. Of, across the solar disk, pardon me, across the solar disk in 1631. You understand that? Of which planet did Horace see a transit in 1639? Big point. Venus. You think that's right? Yeah. One hundred. <laughs> now you have got 
100 pounds. 100 pounds is absolutely safe. Now, would you like to try and answer the test question for your pilot's license, which, of course, will put you into our pressurized cabin? The 100 pounds is safe. There's nothing to lose. I'm like a fool, I'll swing nothing to lose. All right, folks, here we come. What name is given to the nebula in Taurus, which is number one in Messier's catalog? The crab, you're the first man to go into our first one. and then we'll be right back and be ready to zoom again with the sky's the limit. Thank you. It's our first flight. Give her a big drink. Call her a big drink. That's Tony. A little drink with a big kick. Huh? A little drink with a big kick. With biological radiant, even really dried-in stains like this go completely, just in a soak overnight. Biologically spotless and more, already whiter. Radiant for the white of white, biologically. Just a juice of For refreshing from flavor, orange, lemon, strawberry, rice, and fruits made to make your mouth water. He's lucky, because you use Clinopine, everywhere's completely clean. That's because Clinopine cleans away dirt and kills germs. Clinopine, the complete cleaner, cleans and disinfects in one go. Tonight, when you pour yourself a bottle of Guinness, you might wonder whether there's anything you can add to improve that strong, dry taste. After 200 years or so, you might come up with the same answer we did. Another bottle of Guinness. Next time you feel particularly thirsty, try it. You'll find it's exactly twice as good as one bottle. Texaco station you'll find new clean power Texaco, the better petrol that first cleans your carburetors, then clean cuts engine wear significantly. New clean power Texaco. Article 0730, United States Navy Regulation. The commanding officer shall not permit his command to be searched by any person representing a foreign state. But Commander Booker did give up the Pueblo. Now he tells his own story in the Sunday Telegraph. Should he have surrendered? Or gone by the book and been blown to pieces? What fearful bungling led to his cruel dilemma? Who was to blame for the Pueblo fiasco? Tomorrow, in the Sunday Telegraph. from the HPV area who is going to try for a thousand miles in a special picture And Britain disappears, Britain disappears, and at this present moment of time, the world is your oyster. Now the place you, that you say that you want to go to is Australia, is that right? Now we're going to put you into this pressurized airplane, and the first question that will be asked will be worth 1,000 miles. That's 500 miles out from Britain, and 500 miles back, and the very best of luck to you. Okay? Bruce? <laughs> Put him in a seat, Monica. That's the idea. Put the headset on. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Put the pressure lock on. Now. That's it. Now, Bruce, can you hear me? You quite comfortable? Yes. Yeah. Fine. On your left-hand side, old lad, you will see that there is an altimeter. That altimeter is set at 30,000 feet. From 30,000 feet down to the ground, you have two minutes. 
in which to answer the question. I'm going to read the question to you, and I want you to tell me that you completely and utterly understand. Once you have done that, you will start from 30,000 feet, and you must answer the question before you crash, okay? Please, Monica, the 1,000-mile question on astronomy. Here it is. For 1,000 miles of travel, which comet has been seen roughly every 76 years and is the only naked eye comic, comet to have a period of less than a century? Do you understand the question? Yes. Yeah. All right. The altimeter starts to descend now. Uh, Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet is the correct answer. Now, Bruce, you have 1,000 miles of travel plus 100 pounds. Would you like to try for 2,000 more miles of travel, which will give you 3,000 miles of travel altogether, plus another 100 pounds expense money? I would. You would. All right. Monica, if you please. Fine. May we please set the altimeter back to 30,000 feet? I'll take your time and never hesitate to ask me a question again. Okay, because the first answer you give me must always be the right one. I see we have a three-part question here. Now, when we come to the end of each part, we stop the altimeter descending. You've got the message, so you're perfectly, perfectly under control, all right? Here is the question for 3,000 miles of travel. This question is in three parts and is to do with stars. I want you to tell me the names of the two brightest stars and the name of the nearest star, excluding the sun, of course, to the Earth. Now, first of all, one, do you understand the question? Yes, I do. Right, one, what is the brightest star of all? <laughs> Start the altimeter. Two again. Sirius is the correct answer, and you only descended 500 feet. <laughs> what is the next brightest star? Canopus. Canopus is correct, and you've only descended a thousand feet. And lastly, what is the nearest star? Proxima Centauri. You have got 3,000 miles of travel and 200 pounds expense money. I want to say congratulations to you. We are very thrilled to think that you're the first person on our game uh, to have won this amount of uh, travel and also the, the expense money to go with it and the very fact that you come from Wales. So come back one week from tonight and tell us if you're going to go on because you go on and on and on until you can eventually get 21,000 miles. You can always stop whenever you want. You understand? And of course you can split it if you want to take uh, that girlfriend with you or your dad or your mom. You can do that as well. Okay? Give my regards to Wales. And thank you very much for being here. Bruce Bell. All right. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. That's the game. The game which is open to everybody throughout the nation. It's called The Sky's the Limit. We hope that you will be flying with us next week. And so from... And, and from the old man who controlled himself. Good night and happy traveling.